Hey, I'm famous and homeless and the Prime Minister won't listen to me. That's a weird thing to say, isn't it? If only you knew my story. The office of, I'm a famous person, um, a, a public speaker of 20 years, um, advocating for people um, with less privilege than myself and less privilege than most. Um, the office of Prime Minister and Cabinet at the moment won't validate my thousand strong match um, in my freedom of information. They rejected it. Here's why that matters and how it goes backwards from that. Um, I have been the victim of a violence of neglect. I sit here today, I've got a big heart and I'm, I'm sentient and I've got a big heart and I still want to give this back to the community. Um, now, what's happened is I've lost many, many millions of dollars in detriment. That is due to being categorically uh, character assassinated to the point that it killed me. That's not a good part of the story, but the good part is that I'm here and, um, and I'm still conscious and alive and, um, and I still want to give this back. Um, now, as a human rights awarded advocate and author and doctor of philosophy and someone who ran my own business with very marginalised people for two years, I became unwell from work um, due to uh, my own sexual abuse case in which um, I was the victim. and. Um, and further, um, uh, I was treating a person who had a, a, a sexual abuse case. So the VOCAT cases were cooked and I was in a violent affray in which I saved someone and, um, and the police pinned it on me. Um, underpinning this uh, was uh, my, my uh, some time off work then, and I had some time off work. My income protection didn't pay. And why? It's systemically cooked from the top, and I'll tell you why. My former partner is an ASIO agent. He has half a million dollars that he owes me right this second. Why can't I get that acknowledgement? Every time I've tried to get that from him, I end up in the psych ward. That's because I'm easily exploitable as someone with a mental illness, gay, have used drugs in the past, whatever, who hasn't, and um, am character assassinated. It buys into already existing prejudices that are present in my family, in friends, and um, it identifies me is unwell. What's unwell is a sick society um, and it's underpinned by powerful people. One of those powerful people and a very cowardly person is my former partner Steve Isonides. Every time I try and get an atonement for our relationship together in which he exploited me financially and sexually, I end up in the clink in the psych ward. This systemic abuse was so gutless and via proxy that I lost my income assist, I lost Australian Financial Complaints Authority. Um, they delayed, deferred, denied all of my financial cases up to a year and a half when they should have done it within four weeks. That's against their principles. And then I um, told them I was going to call them on whistleblowing and um, they banned me. So every financial complaint I have now, I can't do anything. The Australian Human Rights Commission free kicked a million dollar deal in which I was exploited um, by a super company to the opposition, that's not very impartial, is it? Um, and on and on it goes. The AAT, work cover, former partner issues, insurance, a TPD claim for 2008, TPD claim for 2007. It's, um, it's, it's an unholy amount of systemic and utter abuse and neglect of one particular person, and that's me, Dr. Richard McLean. And I'm just trying to find my way back from it. I've finally, after 10 years of not having one, found myself a lawyer, but I don't know how articulated that is to set up to fail because I've been set up to fail again and again and again. I actually had a complaint about a, a, a GP, a valid complaint. His lawyer informed the um, government ombudsman and sat on the legal bar of Australia. So every person I spoke to or every agency in the right way of going about a complaint was absolutely and utterly cooked, framed, and set up to fail. That systemic abuse, that neglect, oh, hello, this is Crystal, this is Crystal, my dog, and we're just sitting in the park. We've got not a scent, but sentience. You can't stop us from speaking. And um, I just wanna say that um, as I was set up to fail for so long, it's rendered me um, so bereft of hope in the human race that I actually attempted suicide within a psychiatric unit in February, 2021. It was deemed a fatal injury and a lethal attempt. 
in the Freedom of Information documents. Still, the hospital, wherever of mercy, are not very merciful. Um, I can't get a lawyer. I can't sue for the detriment. I can't feel my feet. And now I have uh, a brain injury from losing all my blood. Um, it's a sad story, that part, but um, the good part is that I'm alive and conscious and absolutely and utterly aware of the systemic, gutless scapegoating that comes from government agencies and systemic abuse and financial abuse. As a registered NDIS provider and therapist, I'm obliged to report this to the NDIA and the NDIS Commission. I've done so and they will not acknowledge me. I've, um, I'm watching over my shoulder. Seriously don't know if someone's gonna blow my head off. Um, look, um, it's an abhorrent amount of abuse and neglect and the Office of Prime Minister and Cabinet um, have acknowledged um, as a former nationally celebrated speaker who's spoken in Montreal to Parliament House, to keynote presentations in Melbourne and Sydney, to Dubbo and Warrnambool, all over hundreds of speeches, hundreds of talks that um, uh, I might even send this to a few of you actually, um, have, um, have would, would have a national profile. And they told me so that I had many thousands of matches. And then they got back to me and said, you don't exist. And that's exactly what they want. I'd like for you today, you know, to consider me existing amongst this systemic and vile oppression that's again identifying, identifying me as ill when in actual fact it's systemic, it's via proxy and it's by government agencies and seriously powerful people underpinning this absolute corruption. I'm queer, I drink a beer if I had one and I'm bereft of any finance. I've, um, I'm living in poverty and 18 months after I survived that lethal attempt, being filled up with someone else's blood, I was unceremoniously dumped from the hospital and 18 months later, I've been fighting for my rights. Today, I sit here with the dog, peacefully in the park. I'm hungry, I've got no avenue for complaint and every single person in my life, friend, family, others, Crystal, um, are willing to exploit me as um, someone who's absolutely crazy. However, they don't understand or can acknowledge, or even worse, they do, this systemic and atrocious, malicious and vile, gutless violence of neglect, which may actually kill me. The, 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 the quick part of that is get his money and then get his reputation and then get everything he stands for. I've been exploited so utterly and thoroughly crystal, um, with my reputation. I want to give this back to the community. I want to survive and I want to thrive, but I'm going to need the public's help. I want to take this to the High Court of Australia. But they're going to try and kill me in the meantime. And you know what? All my friends are going to buy into it that it should be me looking out for welfare. It should be me going for the food packages. It should be me look, um, you know, rationing my DSP. And I just got to say that's $1,400 a month and my rent alone is $1,600 a month. That's 18 months that the government's witnessed a very well-known public advocate and human rights award-winning author and autobiographer exploited for being bravely vulnerable in a book that I published 20 years ago. They've watched me burn. And with your support, just even if it's twenty dollars or whatever that you can they can help get me through um i want to um get an advocate if you can help me i want legal help if you can have a cup of tea if you can be that person who says we know about the systemic abuse and neglect we know that you're a sentience we know that you have agency thought compassion and that you're going to give this millions of dollars of detriment Back to the marginalised people that need it, as I've always done in my 20 year career of advocacy. So please um, consider investing, and I say invest, or even share this to a lawyer you know, to a, um, 
to someone high up in politics, to any single police officer who is within the Charter of Human Rights of people with a disability, of which I now identify, for um, not acting outside that Charter of Human Rights. It is upon every public official not to ignore this video. I might even send it to all parliamentarians because I've already emailed the Attorney General, Mark Dreyfus, who I've got photos with, and told him about this injustice and it's just going around in circles. I did it to him in opposition, and now I'm doing it um, in, in this government. And again, to Bill Shorten, where my, again, my NDIA arts therapist role, um, the work covers still to come. So um, please help me if you can. Um, sharing this helps, um, contacting me helps, um, getting me in touch with a lawyer, uh, that helps donating and investing and i say investing because i'm going to win this but i'm going to need everyone's help to get there and i don't need to be exploited anymore by um mental health institutions that now government sanctioned medication me which is why i've got to drop lip and talk funny um to be medicated for guess what delusions of persecution and that is how the violence of neglect and a corrupt mental health system abuses someone with malicious victimization and vile neglect and identifies them with illness when in fact it is the system that is ill. And I have sentience, I'm amazing. We'll get there. If you can help, help. If you can't, don't hurt me anymore. Thanks for listening.